by Doug Cole. Doug is, uh, once again, he is uh, uh, going on project number six, and he is entitled his speech, Gnarly Dude. So without further ado, let's bring up Doug Cole. So let's start off with a joke. What do you call a surfer in Northern California that's surfing next to a seal? An appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk about surfing today. I'm first going to start off talking about the different styles of surfing. There are shortboarding and longboarding. I am going to talk about the some of the myths about <coughs> surfing. Surfers are stupid and they talk funny. And then I'm going to talk about some of the life lessons that surfing teaches you about uh, how to always stay calm, how to never give in, and how to always be positive. Um, start off with the different styles of surfing. There's two types of surfing. There's shortboarding and longboarding. Typically you have your shortboard, which is kind of pointing like this. It's uh, anywhere from five to eight feet. <coughs> then you have your longboard, which kind of goes like this, anywhere from 12 to 20 feet. Typically the longboard's about 12 feet, but some people like longer boards. Um, shortboarding, if you're gonna compare it to music, was is like punk rock, where longboarding is more like jazz. It's more smooth. If it was dancing, I'd say longboarding is like waltz, just nice and flowing. And shortboarding is more like slam dancing. <laughs> you, when you're out there longboarding, you want to take what the wave gives you. You got this big heavy board, and you just want to kind of just take what the wave gives you. Go out, be very smooth, very very agile, where shortboarding, you go out there and you want to just tear the wave up. You want to make a mess of it. <laughs> um, next thing I want to talk about would be some of the myths of surfing. First one would be surfers are stupid. Uh, surfers aren't stupid. Surfers are some of the smartest people you'll ever meet. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're engineers. I don't know if you ever checked the, the price of land at the coast, but it's not cheap. So if you want to live near the coast, you got to be successful to be successful. You need to live near the coast. Eh, you need a good job, you need a good education so that you can live near the coast to surf. Uh, the next myth I want to talk about are surfers talk funny. Anybody ever seen the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Mm -hmm. It's the goalie. Far out, dude. Surfers don't talk like that. <laughs> surfers don't say things like, totally awesome or way out, or, you know, I'm gonna catch a riptide and rip up that wave, man. It just doesn't happen. Servers don't talk like that. They're far too well educated, most of them. Uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was <clears throat> some of the life lessons that surfing teaches you. First thing is patience. Waves usually come in and sets from three to 12, maybe 20 waves, depending on how big a storm it is. When you're surfing, you learn that the first waves in the set are usually the worst, and the best waves are the last ones. So it forces you to learn patience if you want to get the best waves, so that you can wait and wait and wait to get the best waves. The next thing surfing teaches you is how to always stay calm. When you're surfing on a big day and you fall, once you go underwater, you can be underwater for upwards of two minutes. That wave's gonna do what it wants with you. It's gonna put you into the spin cycle. You're gonna be spinning every which way it moves. What you learn is to stay calm. Let the wave take you where it's gonna take you. Once it's taking you where you take taking you, take note of where you're at and get your plan to get back up and get some air. If you're fighting during that whole time, what happens is it knocks the air out of your lungs and you're more susceptible, susceptible to drowning. It can get really nasty when you're under for a while and you lose all your air, speaking from experience. <laughs> the next thing it teaches you is to never give up. When I was a kid, I was about 11, I told my mom I wanted to get a surfboard. It was September, just the end of summer. She said, yeah, you save the money from your paper out all winter, we can get a surfboard next summer. So I saved every penny for my surfing, for my surfboard all winter. <clears throat> In May, my mom took me down to the surf shop to get a new surfboard. After purchasing the surfboard, she took me down to the beach, dropped me off, and I 
tried to surf. I'd been boogie boarding my whole life. I could do all kinds of tricks. And that day was miserable. I went out, I hit my head on the surfboard and actually cracked the surfboard. Uh, I got a huge gash in my leg from the fin. I got a whip mark across my back from the leash. Fell and almost knocked myself out on a sandbar. I got home from surfing that day. I threw the surfboard in the garage. Never surfing again. My mom said, not only are you gonna to learn to surf, but I'm dropping your little tush, tushy down that beach every day until you learn. It's taught me a valuable lesson. If you're gonna do something, you might as well go all, go all out. It's gonna be painful learning, but it's gonna be fun. And the harder you go at it to learn, the quicker you get to that pain period. So I hope the, um, that's, hope what you learned from my speech today is that there's a couple styles of surfing, shortboarding and longboarding, that surfers don't talk funny, that they're smart, and then it teaches us some good life lessons. Stay calm, um, never give up. And I wanna leave with a quote that I say quite often, which I don't even think you've maybe even heard me say, which is, life is an adventure, surf it. Thank you. <laughs>